goes back to that government incompetence, but that's why I keep going back to Obamacare, and that's why it is so scary to see this kind of incompetence uh, go into the hands of, when it comes to our health care, to go into the hands of the government, because the Ebola issue is a perfect example of such incompetence, so the VA sc- scandal as well. There's a couple of things that are sacred to people, Twyla, and health care is one of them. Well, I think that the at least two interesting things I think that have been in the news, but one is about the Halbig and the King lawsuits, and both of them have to do with the subsidies going to uh, individuals to purchase Obamacare. So there are huge, I think it's like $800 million in taxpayer-funded subsidies going to these folks buying Obamacare. But there are these four lawsuits that are moving forward that would stop this in all the states, now around 38 states or 39 states, that don't have their state-based exchange. The only places where you could get subsidies if these lawsuits prevail are in the 14, or now are we down to 12 states Mm -hmm. um, that still have the state-based exchanges. And so that's good news for those who want freedom in America and Mm -hmm. those who don't want rationing by the government, that these lawsuits are still moving forward. The other thing on the other side is that it's really important to understand how many people used to have private health insurance that have now been shunted into Medicaid. So an article in the Wall Street Journal was just talking about 80% of the people in the Medicaid expansion are people who used to have private health insurance, people who used to be able to get the care that they wanted right away. But now there's only 45% of the doctors who accept Medicaid. And in Minnesota, for instance, we only have 23 percent of the doctors who accept Medicaid because the payments are so poor. Mm -hmm. And so when Obama is out there promising coverage for everyone, one, people with private insurance who had great coverage that they paid for themselves, they're losing it, and they're getting something that is definitely subpar, definitely something that nobody wants to have. They're saying they've covered all these people. Well, they've uncovered a whole bunch of people. If you join me late, you are listening uh, to the voice of Twyla Brace from the Citizens Council for Health Freedom, cchfreedom.org. Find a lot of information on some current health issues at that website. And speaking of these kinds of issues, Twyla, this lack of privacy protection here a year later now, Obamacare has been in play one full year. Enlighten us as to how the privacy protection disaster is playing out. Well, I would say it's good to remember what the security experts said to Congress in testimony is that the health insurance exchange should be shut down. Healthcare.gov should be shut down because it was not built on a data security platform, and the only way to actually secure the data is to shut it down and start anew. And healthcare.gov has already had a hack. So there's already been a hacking episode. They say they didn't get a whole lot. It was used for another purpose, but that just shows you that once everybody gets their data in there, I mean, Obama really wants to have all of us going to healthcare.gov or our state-based exchange, which is just a feeder system into healthcare.gov, wants to have us all going there to purchase insurance, which of course won't be insurance at all. It will be just government-run healthcare Mm -hmm. on a sliding fee scale. It's creating the largest infrastructure in the country based on no security of data, and that's financial data. Eventually, it'll be healthcare data. There's some healthcare data now, but not very much, but I believe that will be linked together. You know, data personal data, data on your family and your income and your social security number and and all of this kind of stuff, which will be available to any hacker. And, you know, even the Pentagon hasn't been able to keep themselves from hacking. That's more critical data to the country than healthcare.gov and our personal data. So I don't even believe it's going to be protected anywhere close. It's already not. It was built with no protection in it. No protection, I know. I found it interesting that the creator of the Affordable Care Act, uh, Dr. Ezekiel Emanuel, he came out, this is a month ago now, and he said, uh, he said no one should live longer than 75, and even himself, he said he he didn't even want to live any longer than 75 years, at which time he said he will have lived a complete life. Again, here shades of the, I I don't know that I want to use the word death panels, but I will anyway, certainly uh, shades of suggesting that anybody over 75 and above, inconvenient, We're going to inconveniently get rid of you, too. 
Well, and it's interesting because if you, it's a very long article that he wrote. At the bottom of it, he says that he reserves the right yes. to change his mind. Change his mind. And I thought, yes. and are you going to give all of us the right to change our mind? Yes. Of course because, not. Because, you know, because Obamacare is really based on this whole idea that they will decide when we're valuable enough to provide us with care. And so he thinks somehow in his lofty position that he will be able to decide. And I would say he has helped to create a system in which even he will not be able to decide whether or not he continues to have a complete life after the age of 75. He's got this idea in mind, and he's only 18 years away from it. That's and right. somehow he thinks that he will have control when the time comes. 